Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream on Twitch weekdays from 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States, 11 a.m. in Australia and 12 a.m. in the UK. Uh, just a reminder guys, if you're in the UK that you start daylight savings next week. So the start time for you guys will be pushed forward to 1 a.m. It won't affect anyone in the United States or Australia. It's always going to be 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S. But it will change for you guys in the U.K. next week because of your daylight saving. It'll change again for Australia when we finish daylight saving, but we'll tackle that when, when the time comes uh, next month in April. Now, just a reminder as to what we're doing. Um, I'm creating an Art Deco interior and exterior building uh, in the Unreal Engine 4.15. I created this building originally in UDK in 2011 and I'm recreating it now to see what the differences in lighting and the engine uh, have happened since UDK six years ago. So yesterday we were working on, this is the actual Art Deco building we're going to be uh, recreating in Unreal Engine. We're working on the assets at the moment in 3D Studio Max. Um, yesterday we were working on these uh, wrought iron gateway section which is in, inside of the building and what we were doing was we were taking them into Substance Painter to paint them up and then we were importing them into the Unreal Engine I think so what we've been doing is each time we work on an asset and finish it in Max we import it into Unreal so by the time we get to the end of our row of our assets or props if you want to call them that in Max we'll have all of our objects ready to rebuild that building in Unreal uh, and yesterday we were working on those gate sections, just texturing them up in Substance Painter, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, and to get them ready. And again, we really only need three sections for these, uh, for that, to recreate that gate. So the top section, uh, the side sections, there we go, waiting for my texture to pop in there. Uh, these these tall sections and then the uh, actual gate section, which is this one here and The reason we, we only need three is because we're going to instance um, The rest of this inside of the engine and we're going to do that to save on textures and polygon memory so By only working with three pieces of geometry we can recreate the entire gate section here So we really only need the top one of those uh, gate sections which the two of them sit in here and two of them on the ends and one of these tall sections here we'll just uh, instance it in the engine and that'll save us some textures memory and polygon account saving our textures and polygons so what we have to do now is um, choose another one of these assets to work on to bring into the Unreal Engine and again, these are assets I created in 2011. So what we're doing is we're going through them one by one and, and updating them for the new engine to make them look a bit better. So I'll either be changing the textures on them or adding a bit more geometry to the mesh itself just to make it a bit more higher poly because graphics cards have gotten a lot faster now from six years ago. Uh, they can use You can use a lot more memory and um, consoles have also gotten faster and you can use more memory in them. So. We may as well take advantage of that and uh, update our assets for 2017. So I'm just going through here and looking at what I might want to work on next. Uh, do remember guys, if you've got any questions for me, feel free to pop into chat and ask me. Um, a bit about my background, I work in architectural visualization now. I've worked in games development in the past. I've worked for a couple of different game studios. I've done some cinematic film work. Um, so if you do have any questions regarding, I've, I've worked in 3D for more than 10 years, so if you do have any questions regarding 3D, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. It doesn't have to be about 3D Studio Max. Um, this is a program I use, and I use it because we use it in architectural visualization quite a bit. But if you use another 3D program such as Blender, which is completely free, um, and you're not sure about something, pop into chat. I don't use Blender, but a lot of 3D software is interchangeable, so what works in one program should work in another, uh, in a similar way, if not the same way. Uh, if you want to pop in the chat and say hello, that's always cool. If you just want to watch, that's completely fine. 
Um, so we've got to work out what asset we want to work on next. These are like um, balconies, that are, railings that run along the top of the second floor of that building. And this is a, a stairwell railing that runs it toward the back of the building up to the second floor. Um, we do have one more, well actually we've got two more light fittings we have to work on. Let me just have a look at this one. And again this is really low poly and I want to update the, uh, I want to make, add more geometry to this to make it look uh, a bit more high polygon. Particularly as it's a light source, having a bit, bit of actual geometry as opposed to just a texture map here will um, help the look of the light as it actually hits the the light itself. By adding more geometry you'll get more interest on that um, prop or that asset. I do want to tackle that one but I won't do that today because I'm thinking I may change the uh, this texture map out for an actual uh, glass material. We'll see how we go with that. So I won't do that today and that's, that's a quite a complicated piece of um, light fitting to work on. So <laughs> we'll do that on another day. We will get to it but not today. What do I want to work on today? Okay. Well, we could work on this. Um, there's just a few things I don't like about this original asset. The fact that I'm using different colored textures here for the wood. I, I made it six years ago, guys. Uh, don't judge me. I, I, I don't have a, a reason as to why I did that. It's very strange. You should not. I should not have used a different color wood like that. That's just odd. And I, what I mean by different color, different color from the actual columns to these uh, lighter brown tops and this square piece here. It's it's very strange. I shouldn't have done it. I don't know why I did it. So we need to uh, fix that. As far as geometry goes, though, on this asset, it's probably okay. We can get away with using a normal map for this uh, detailing here along the bottom with these circles. Uh, the same with this um, decorative piece in the middle. We can probably get away with using a uh, normal map for that. Let's have a look at this asset. Let's break it apart, I think. Let's um, isolate our selection. That just makes it easy for me to work in Mac so I don't have all the rest of the assets uh, confusing me. Make sure it's uh, not grouped. It is, so I'm going to ungroup it. Okay. Now it's, it's grouped in that these are wrought iron pieces here are separate pieces of geometry. Now I've done that, <clears throat> pardon me, on purpose so that I can just export one copy of just this piece of geometry here into the Unreal Engine and then I can instance that all the way around the outside of this um, again this is uh, inside of the uh, Unreal building let me open up the video I did of uh, UDK four years, uh, six years ago and see if we can find where that is inside the building. So you can just get some context as to what that piece of geometry is for. This is where we start flowing through the building. Okay, I'm going to pause it just here. That is actually this piece of um, railing that runs around the second floor that overlooks the first floor. So I think we might work on that today. Now again, you see in the engine, the, that difference in color between the two wood textures is not really noticeable, which is probably why I left it the way it was. But generally you would not, um, you wouldn't do that in, that in your assets. You wouldn't have a different colored wood like that. So just to continue on with what we were talking about. I'm going to instance, uh, save out this piece of uh, wrought iron work as a separate object so we can instance it in the engine and copy it around and uh, recreate this inside of Unreal. That'll save us some polygons by doing that. I'm not going to be doing it for the railings here which is another thing you could do but because these are really only planes with the texture on them and I won't, um, I won't be, you know, I may add a bit more geometry to those, we'll see. What I want to do though at this stage is, um, I already have one of those saved out. I moved it out from here. I'm going to remove these wrought iron pieces. 
because like I said, we're going to be recreating, remaking that in Unreal. We'll put them back into place once we get into the engine. So let's, um, <clears throat> pardon me, let's just remove these. Now I think what I'm going to do here too is um, I'm going to start breaking this piece of geometry up. I'm not going to leave it as, I will export it as one piece of geometry for, for retexturing purposes though at this stage I'm going to um, break it up a bit I think. Yeah, I think it's probably the easiest way will be to break it up. Uh, we'll reattach it in Max and then we can export it to uh, Unreal. So now I've noticed with a few of my assets, if you guys that are regulars to my channel have been watching, some of them have, the vertices are not welded for some strange reason. Looks like the top section is separate already. Yeah, the verts are, uh, haven't been welded. So I want to check that right now. I'm going to, um, we'll start with this top railing section. Select that and see if my verts are welded. You see, I can tell that they're not because it's not selecting the entire object. So let's fix that up to begin with. So it's an edit mesh at the moment. And like I explained to you guys, you should really always work in um, edit poly mode. So I'm going to turn on vertices, select all my verts, pull in a little bit. Uh, we're still in edit mesh mode. You should always convert to edit poly. <laughs> I got <laughs> confused myself. So make sure you're in edit poly mode. Make sure your verts are all selected. I'll just make sure by selecting them again. Now we can go to our world here and open up a dialogue. I'm going to pull that up here so we can see it a bit better. Um, and I know from these assets that I can go up to about 0 0.5 centimeters before I start uh, messing up all of my my uh, polygons. Pull it back a little bit. Make sure that everything still looks okay and nothing has collapsed too much, like two verts haven't been joined together that shouldn't be. That looks okay. Let's go back into sub-object mode. And now you see when I select them, I select the entire piece of the geometry. So that tells me that um, all of my vertices are welded together correctly. All right. Now we're going to do this as one piece. Yeah, we may as well do this as one piece. Let's exit uh, sub object mode and I'm going to isolate the selection again. Again, that just helps me to keep um, narrowing it down. So I'm only working on the piece of geometry that uh, interests me. Now I want to completely replace this texture, I think in um, Substance Painter. We'll repaint it in Substance Painter. I do use Mari and I prefer to use Mari to do my texture painting uh, simply because Mari can take really large textures and um, it's more I, I do more painting work in Mari as opposed to Substance Painter which works with physically based uh, materials um, and while it is a 3D painting program still it works in a little differently to uh, Mari in that like I said it's physically based materials uh, you don't do quite as much painting and it's the painting part that I really like when I work in uh, doing texture painting in Mari so but Substance Painter is good for, for some things and for this it should be quite good just to put a wood texture on our uh, banister railings here so let's see I think the first thing we should do is No, I'm, I'm not going to render out a multi uh, material ID here because it's only going to be one material we're worried about anyway. So if you were watching my stream yesterday, you saw me for that um, wrought iron uh, gateway render out a multi material ID so that we could assign different materials to the different parts of the model. But because this is only going to use one material, we don't have to do that step. So what we can do, I think, is throw on an unwrap UVW. Open up our UVW editor and see we uh, have a bit of a mess here. So let's select everything. Let's try flatten mapping to begin with. I'll see what that gets me. I'm also just going to double check uh, what, what is going on here in my viewport. OK. 
the top sections, the side sections, the sides. Alright. Okay. This should this should work for what we want. Now yeah. Now that we've done our unwrap UVW here, I'm gonna pull my um window in a bit. Let's uh <clears throat> again <clears throat> pardon me guys. Let's export this um, asset so we can bring it into Substance Painter. So I'm going to uh, export it as an FBX file. Uh, let's go into our exports folder. <coughs> Create a new folder for this. And we'll call this uh, folder <coughs> a Square Bannister, I think. SQR <coughs> Bannister. And we'll call that object uh, SQR <coughs> Bannister Top. I'm just using uh, Smoothing Groups Triangulate and Preserve Edge Orientation in my FBX export here. Let's um, jump into Substance Painter. Create a new project. Uh, let's select that uh, banister top that we just exported. Uh, 2K will be fine. Again, remember, get, get larger and you can always reduce it down later on. Your texture size if it's too big. Whereas if it's too small, uh, you don't want to be uh, scaling it up. You'll see some polys are missing from the corners here. That's where the banisters intersect the uh, corners. Uh, again, any, any polygon that for a game model that uh, isn't seen generally should be removed. Uh, I haven't been doing it on all of the assets because I'm not creating a game. Um, I'm creating a cinematic in Unreal. But uh, if you were creating a game, particularly on mobile, you would want to make sure that any polygons that were never going to be seen in the model uh, are removed just to lower your poly count as much as you can. So we have our uh, banister tops in the engine in Substance Painter. Let's find a material here that uh, will be good for it. Let's see. Um, I know that I want a wood and I think I'm going to go with um, the same wood I used for the wooden arches that go with uh, toward the top of the ceiling. Again a few weeks ago you guys would have seen me making uh, texturing those up in Substance Painter. Uh, so to keep things consistent with the uh, all of the wood and it was just American cherry. Let's pull that one in. Again, I'm going to um, remove this bottom layer because uh, it's not being used. Let's have a look at our wood texture here. I'm just going to go into its um, parameters and see what we've got to work with. As far as our height position goes, I may pull that back a little bit as well. I don't want it to be quite so bumpy. Uh, same with our roughness here. If I take that up more towards the white value, it, it takes away some of the roughness. If I pull it all the way back, you see what that does? It makes it look very um, rough, bumpy. Uh, I want it to be a bit smoother than that, so I'm going to pull it out. Not too much. I still want a bit of roughness in there. Okay, let's uh, pull back and have a look at some of our other settings. We've got a um, fiber setting here, which is probably not going to do a lot on this piece of geometry. And our layers setting which is the amount of layers in the wood. You see the higher I pull it up, the more layers we get. We don't want that many layers though. Okay. 
I'm just going to pull out and have a look at the uh, overall wood on that banister. We pull our layers up just a little bit more to give it a bit more interest. Uh, we can change our wood color, but I don't want to do that at this stage. I don't think. Uh, our luminosity will change how luminous or how bright that wood color is. Just going to pull back on the luminosity just a little bit. Uh, our contrast. Yeah, I don't think I'll pull up or down on the contrast at all. We'll leave that around about the middle. I'm not going to change my saturation or my hue to change the color of the wood. We have this normal intensity here, which again, if I alter, if I rotate my model so I can see it better reflected in the light, while I play with my normal intensity a bit. Gonna pull it up just a little bit. Now let's look at our UV scale here, and this is the amount of tiling that the texture is actually doing. Let's so play with that to see what, what how it affects the actual model. So if I change that to ten, come on, ten. You see, we're starting to get a lot of banding happening. I change it to one. We're getting a lot less banding, and it's uh, stretching the, the texture out a lot more. But because it's a um, procedurally generated texture, it's not like a bitmap where you, if you stretch a bitmap, you start to get problems happening. It's um, so you, you've got a lot more leeway with um, stretching it out than you would with a bitmap. Let's uh, unlink the X and the Y value here. And now it's just a question of playing with it until we get values that look good for the um, model piece it's being applied to. Up perspective so I can get a, a better judge of whether the uh, texture is scaled correctly. I think that should be okay for what we want. Okay so we have our base texture color here. Let's um, pull in this wood beach honey here and pop it underneath of the, um, the one above it. Now I'm going to add a mask here. Um, Wrong colour. Uh, what it's done is it's actually replaced my um, American sherry wood here. I want to change that back. Making sure that my um, settings are the same. Going to remove the top layer. That was just because when I placed the uh, the second texture down, I must have placed it accidentally on top of the um, the first bump, so it replaced it. Uh, so that just means we have to pull back on our height again, pull up a bit on our normal intensity, and pull up a bit on our roughness. Now that underlying uh, bumpiness that we're seeing is coming from this American honey. So if I go into that and I'm going to turn off um, roughness and height back up to my American wood cherry again and play it with my roughness. I'm going to pull that back a bit. 
or make it a bit, little bit more rough, I should say. And just pull up a little bit of my height. And again, I'm going to pull back just a little bit of my luminosity. I may actually change the color a little bit just to bring it a bit more into the uh, red value. That's better. I just wanted the uh, wood to be a little bit redder, not less brown, more red. Okay, so we have our um, American cherry on top and we have our wood beach honey underneath. Now I'm going to add a mask. And it's a white mask. I'm going to go into my um, brushes. Choose this dirt brush, I think. Bring it way, way down. Zoom in on my model. Again, I'm going to bring my brush size right down. I'm actually going to use the Wacom um, pen here as well. Okay, now, I think we're getting height information here. Yeah. I'm just going to undo that with Control Z. And I'm going to uh, just turn off my height yeah, for a minute. What I'm doing here is I'm just uh, scouring the edge of the wood to make it look as if it's become worn from people placing their hands on it. Now, if you're working from with a high res to a low res, uh, res mesh here, what you could do is you could bake out a, a um, curvature map and then use a generator to actually do that automatically. Uh, again, I prefer not to use a generator if I can get away with it because what tends to happen is uh, every model you create looks like every other model everybody else does because they all use generators and generators are all procedurally created so you're going to get uh, things starting to look the same. Um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to jump back into my uh, American cherry colour here. I'm just going to again just change the colour a little bit to make it a little bit more red so I can better see the, uh, the honey wood underneath. I may pull back a bit on the luminosity as well. Pull it. Ooh, that's better. Okay, so let's start pulling again on our model piece here. And continue uh, scouring the edges. Make sure you're in your uh, alpha map though. And again, I'm not, gonna, I'm not running my, my pen here all the way along the edge. I'm, I'm missing a few spots in between just to make the wearing look a bit more natural. You don't want to be going like that where you're just running a line across the entire thing. Because I'm using a Wacom tablet, the uh, the harder I push on the pen, the more of the uh, top um, cherry wood I'm removing. So, in, in addition to me missing some spots, I'm also pushing uh, less and more in some spots as well. I'm also making a couple of the um, of the wear marks a little larger than the others, just in spots here and there.
Now again, like as I was saying, you could get this effect by using a generator, uh, by faking out a uh, curvature map and using a generator in uh, Substance Painter. But like I say, you, you're going to find that by using generators to do your edge wearing, uh, all your model pieces are going to look the same. And that's generally the trap a lot of uh, guys that do their texturing a Substance fall into. They do it for a reason because it's uh, convenient, easy and quick. But it does tend to make everybody's models look the same. I'm not saying it's bad to do it. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying that um, doing it that way, you will tend to find that your models start to all look the same. Whereas by doing, doing it by hand like this, you're going to get more uh, a, of a unique look to it than you will with a generator. And just uh, angle that around. So you guys can get a bit better of uh, an angle as to what that's done and how that's uh, just simulated edge wearing here along the, the edge of that banister railing. So we're just going to continue that uh, along the four sides. Again, I'm skipping spots. I'm not running the the, uh, the my tip, my pen all the way along that edge, like backwards and forwards. I'm missing spots here and there, pressing down harder in some spots and less in others. And then a generator can still be good to use if you want to do something like uh, dirty up the texture, which we may do once we're finished painting in our um, distressing here. Uh, you can use a generator to create an overall dirt map for the um, for the object. Like I said, guys, please do feel free if there's anything I'm doing here you're not sure about or you'd like clarification on or or anything like that to pop into chat and ask me. Um, I stream on Twitch to... Uh, the main reason I stream on Twitch, guys, is to encourage you guys to do 3D yourselves because it's a fun thing to do. Um, it's very rewarding. I'm not here just to work on my own stuff. I, I'm here to help you guys as much as I can, so... Uh, like I said, I've worked in the industry for a long time, for, for more than 10 years. Um, and I'm more than happy to help anyone that has any problems or any questions. It's fine if you just want to watch, that's not a problem. I mean, there are times that uh, I watch other 3D guys streaming as well, and 
I don't always pop in the chat and talk to anyone. So I do understand that. That's completely fine. Uh, thank you, Elasti, I think, for the follow. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it when you guys follow my um, Twitch channel. Uh, I do. I stream every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday on Twitch from 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S. Uh, my schedule doesn't change. That's when I'm always streaming. Uh, the only time I wouldn't be streaming then is if there's either a problem with Twitch, like there was a few weeks ago where streams weren't going live, um, or I have to go away for work. Uh, that'd be the only times I wouldn't be streaming, but generally my schedule will never change. So. So let's work on this final edge over here. Don't feel you need to have a Wacom tablet to do this either. You can do it with a mouse. It's just going to be a little bit more fiddly, that's all. Uh, I know it does take a little while too if you're not used to using a tablet and a pen. To uh, it, it take does take a little while to get used to using a pen. If you've been used to using a mouse for so long. but it does give you much finer control. And um, a lot of the guys that work in games do, or, or cinema work particularly, they do use a tablet just for that reason that they can get much more control over their artwork. But like I said, don't feel you need to use a tablet. You can use your mouse. It's uh, just a little bit more fiddly, that's all. It's making that uh, wear mark here a little bit more pronounced than the others. So we have our edge wearing done along the outside of this um, model piece. Just a couple of areas in the top here, I just want to go over. Again, just to add a bit more wearing in spots here and there. this way uh, allows us to do this um, wearing of the top wood to reveal the underlying wood and all that is is, is just the um, the two materials then using a white mask here so I know a lot of, I've seen a lot of people online asking how you do multi materials in substance and that's the best way to do it well if you're not using material ID maps uh, using an alpha mask is probably the best way to do it because yeah, everybody knows how to lay down a um, one material in substance, but when you start trying to blend them together, it can get a bit more uh, problematic. And again, an alpha mask is the best way to uh, to fix that problem. All right, we have the ones on the outside edge here now. 
we could do the ones on the inside edge and I may do a few but bear in mind the inside edge here is overlooking that hole in the ceiling generally people when they would be standing around here and touching this railing are going to be touching mainly this uh, outside edge less so the inside edge 